preachers often avoid Jeremiah's monologue of gloom and doom. They fail to see the inspiration that comes from retro reflection. In other words, they fail to see that if you forget the past, you are doomed to repeat it. Jeremiah's job here is straightforward. He is pointing out that Jehovah is fulfilling his threat. And like any angry warrior, he has turned away from his people. He has withdrawn his hand because of their chronic sins and malignant wickedness. And God is justified in turning away from his people. After all, who ignored who first? We learn from Jeremiah's lament that there is danger in ignoring God. Let me say that again for those of you who didn't hear me in the back. There is danger in ignoring God. It starts out as a, a simple slip. A Sunday here or a Sunday there. Or it could be a pandemic that temporarily separates us. In either case, before you know it, you put God on the back burner. Faith, which once drove you forward has now become an afterthought. Isn't that what has happened in many of our churches? The faith that was once our bulwark or fortification against worldliness has faded from the front lines. Many uh, have conveniently slipped away uh, into a world uh, void uh, of devotion uh, to God. Uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir because you are here in God's house. Uh, but it won't hurt uh, to give you a heads up uh, so it won't uh, happen uh, to you. As I said, uh, there is uh, danger in ignoring uh, the Lord. Uh, look what's happened uh, to our congregations. Uh, for some, uh, Facebook uh, has become uh, their church. Uh, corporate prayer has become uh, a thing uh, of the past. Uh, a is a foreign word. They sat home so long that their church clothes in the back of the closet don't even fit anymore. They find more comfort in sleeping in on Sunday than in uniting with other believers. We don't think of assembled worship as mandatory, but it is. There are distinct reasons why we need to come together to praise God. Hebrews 10, 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Yes. Well, uh, let me see if I can pack the bag uh, and move on down the road. Uh, but first, I want to 
tell you that Sunday is made for God's sins. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, Sunday is made for God's sins. Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord. While those uh, who have fallen away uh, view it uh, as an onerous duty uh, or an unessential uh, affliction, uh, we uh, who are the call of God uh, see it uh, as a privilege uh, to be deprived uh, of it uh, is to suffer loss. Uh, the loss uh, of worship spiritual and social influence. Jeremiah was lamenting the loss of joint fellowship with God's chosen people. They had forgotten their first love. Some of us are lamenting too. We're lamenting that we distance. We're lamenting the fact that we can't hug and shake hands like we used to. We're lamenting the fact that so many continue to allow COVID to keep them from returning to the fellowship with this body of well, uh, let me remind you uh, that worship uh, is made to be uh, aspirational. Uh, it lifts us uh, and uh, elevates us. Uh, it's self-improving uh, because uh, it takes us uh, to a higher plane uh, where we can see the world uh, through uh, and our sheer numbers uh, give life uh, its spiritual uh, warmth. Uh, Sunday uh, is our chance uh, to show uh, our faithfulness uh, to God's house. Sunday uh, is our chance uh, to study uh, God's uh, word. Sunday is our chance to fellowship with God's people. Sunday is our chance to support God's work. Sunday is our chance to build upon God's foundation. Sunday is our chance to show
brings us joy. Uh, the joy of worship uh, is a huge part uh, of the life of uh, a devoted saint. Uh, when we stay home, uh, we forfeit uh, the experience uh, of joint uh, joy. Uh, Esther remembered a time uh, when the Jews had light uh, and gladness uh, and joy uh, and honor. Uh, it was the driving force uh, of uh, their lives. Uh, it is the same now uh, for us. Uh, the Lord is uh, our driving force. Uh, he is our light uh, and uh, our salvation. Uh, but we who are here today uh, remember that uh, not long ago, uh, church uh, gave off more light in uh, the community. Uh, vibrant ministries uh, shared the love of God uh, through their outreach uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, sure, uh, the faithful uh, are still uh, going strong, uh, but the load uh, could be lighter if those who fell away uh, would return uh, to help us. Uh, if they did, uh, they would rediscover uh, the joy uh, of serving uh, the Lord. Uh, I'm sure uh, that's how Jeremiah felt. Uh, he longed for the days uh, when the high priest uh, didn't have to wonder uh, if God's people uh, would show up uh, with their tithes uh, to honor the Lord uh, for his goodness. Uh, he longed uh, for the days uh, when the celebratory feast uh, brought out in God's uh, overjoyed uh, people. Uh, well, uh, joy uh, purifies us. Uh, it keeps out uh, unholy pleasures uh, by satisfying us uh, with God's uh, blessedness. Uh, if we never worship, uh, our faith uh, would become stagnant uh, without God joy uh, in our hearts. Uh, our eyes uh, would become blinded uh, to his beauty. Uh, our shoulders uh, would become burdened uh, and our prayers uh, would become uh, hindered. Uh, our desires uh, would become polluted uh, and our minds uh, would be uh, distracted. Uh, our morals uh, would become lower. Uh, would surface and our peace would soon vanish. But when we come together in worship and we offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, our joint joy gives us strength. The strength that only comes from corporate worship. There is a heightened sense of God's presence among us. A soloist is good, but a choir is better. One usher is good, but many ushers is better. One Musician is good, but two or three is better. One missionary is good, but many mission workers is better. One deacon is good, but a full board of deacons is far better. One praying saint is good, but a house full of Sunday is a time for sharing. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor and eyeball if you can. 
this together, church. For the Jews, festivals were a time for meeting other Jews from all corners of their country. Townsmen met uh, with countrymen. Uh, farmers met uh, with merchants. Uh, herdsmen met uh, with carpenters. Uh, it was a time for uh, communication uh, and brotherly uh, association. Uh, for us, too, uh, it is a time uh, for uh, sharing. Uh, oh yes, uh, when we stay home, uh, we tend to forget uh, our brethren uh, because uh, we don't uh, see them. Uh, but when we come uh, together, uh, we have the opportunity uh, to share our testimony uh, of how uh, we uh, got over. Uh, it's a time uh, to encourage, uh, to reassure, and to inspire each other. Uh, it's a time for the strong uh, to encourage uh, the weak uh, and the more spiritual uh, to inspire the less uh, spiritual. Uh, Sundays uh, raise uh, our spirits uh, and give all our saints uh, a spiritual boost. Uh, Sundays uh, are the high test fuel uh, we need uh, to perform uh, at uh, our best. Uh, brotherly sympathy uh, can only be fostered uh, by uh, brotherly uh, love uh, and brotherly fellowship. Uh, but Sundays uh, are not just uh, to encourage uh, each other. Let me say that again. Uh, Sundays uh, are not uh, just to encourage uh, each other. Uh, Sundays uh, are uh, our stimulus. Uh, we become narrow-minded uh, when we isolate ourselves uh, from each other. Uh, I heard somebody say uh, variety uh, is uh, the spice uh, of life. Uh, and spiritual, yeah, variety uh, is uh, no exception. Uh, you might be able to sing, uh, but there's someone here who can sing uh, you happy. Uh, you might be able to preach, uh, but the sermon you hear makes your heart uh, leap uh, for joy. Uh, you might not feel uh, like praying. But the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, and he will bring happy tears to a faint heart. Our Sundays are a chance to widen our spiritual viewpoint and broaden our spiritual opportunities. Sundays uh, inspire us uh, to get uh, busy, uh, get busy uh, to learn more about the Lord's will, uh, and then uh, to be uh, about uh, the Lord's work. Uh, if there are unbelievers uh, in our midst, uh, the anxious uh, will become uh, assured. Uh, the sinful uh, will become uh, repentant. Uh, the resentful uh, will become uh, forgiving. Uh, the callous uh, will become uh, compassionate. Uh, the defiant uh, will become uh, submissive. Uh, and the burden uh, will become uh, blessed. Uh, I know uh, I'm preaching uh, to the choir uh, because you uh, are here. Uh, but don't you
persistent, but the Lord has you. I know what temptations are enticing, but the Lord has you. I know the laborers are few, but the Lord has you. And it's up to the remnant to revive the prodigals. We've got to shake spiritual complacency. We've got to motivate the idol, lift the lethargic, and restore the spiritually sluggish. Tell them it's time to come back home because the need is great, but the labor is a few. The time is short, but the hour is now. The fields are white, the souls are precious and the rapture is soon. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is looking for you. Where will they find you? In his house or in your bed? Come on back. Come on back. Come on back to Jesus because Sunday is the same. It's time for you to put some faith in God. I know you've been bombarded. Monkey pox, COVID-19, Legionnaire's disease, polio. But the same God who has protected you all these years hasn't turned his back on you now. Practice safe living, safe greeting. Take care of your body. Clean yourself. Keep a distance. But don't let anyone stop your praise. Sinners are dying every day going to hell because you've gone a wall. Sinners are dying in record numbers not hearing about the love of Jesus because they're more likely to hear you in person than they are through an electronic media device. So my word to you is get up out of that bed. Stop being lazy. Stop letting the sniffles hold you back. Get out of bed and come on back to church. Because Sunday is for saints. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in His holy word. He never failed.
Now is a good time. Jesus is looking for disciples, not church members, but disciples that will follow him through the storm, through the rain, through sickness and pain. If any man would come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Have you denied yourself? Have you said it's not all about you, what you have, what you can do? It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Deny yourself. Be willing to give him your all. Take up your cross. There's shame and pain in following Jesus. You'll be rejected. You may have to sacrifice some friends. Turn your back on some family folks that are headed in the wrong direction. Give up that lifestyle that you've been a part of. But if you take up your cross, Jesus will never let you outgive him. Whatever you give up for him, he'll give it back to you better. And then, of course, follow him no matter what. No matter what friends fall by the wayside, no matter what financial losses you have to suffer, no matter what job you may have to give up, no matter what person in your life you may have to separate from, follow Jesus. In good times and bad times, broke, rich, follow Jesus. Won't you make that decision today? All it takes is you communicating with God through prayer. And prayer is talking to God, not fancy words, but with a contrite heart. Lord, I'm sorry. Save my soul. I will follow you all the days of my life. No longer my will, but your will be done. If that is your choice today, give me a call at area code 408 532 Rock. Or go to our website, churchontherockbaptist.com. Send me a message. Let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. And let us believe that you have joined the army of the Lord. Well, it's offering time here at Church on the Rock. And I want to say to those of you who are watching, those of you that have given, thank you very much. You have blessed us here in California, but don't stop because the need is great. Yes, the need is even greater. We've made it so easy for you to be able to give to Church on the Rock through the various financial apps on your phone, iPhone and Google phone. All you have to do when looking at Zelle Pay, which is our preferred financial app, Zelle Pay, PayPal or Cash app. All you have to do is enter our telephone number, area code 408-532-7625. If you're watching through uh, Facebook Live at the top of the screen, you can hit the app button and it will take you to PayPal. We're also on the GiveLify app. Search for Church on the Rock Baptist. You'll see a picture of our sanctuary and you'll be able to give that way. You may also go to our website, Church on the Rock Baptist, hit the giving button, and follow the instructions there. Last but not least, you may mail your tithe or offering to Church on the Rock, Post Office Box 730341, San Jose, California, 95173. Whatever you do for God, do it in faith. And believe that God will bless you and give it back to you even greater than as you cast it out on the waters. Well, thank you for tuning in. We pray that you'll join us again next Sunday, same time, and hear a word of worship from San Jose, California. If you're in the area, we would love to have you to come and worship with us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 2995 Yerba Buena Road in America's 10th largest city, San Jose, California. Until then, don't you give up. Don't you give in. Stay on the battlefield because the Lord needs warriors in this army of his. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.
lost him.